Hey, Coach. How y'all doing? Doing well. Hey, I was wondering if you could just generally update us on the reports that you've gotten on players from uh, this past month and and also the freshmen that have arrived from from your strength staff. Well, uh, I think they're really pleased with what's going on and how the kids returned. I think that's um, uh, the biggest thing. Um, I think we're in pretty good shape for where we are right now and and at this point in time of the season. And uh, we've got a much bigger football team uh, than we had uh, in the uh, middle of the late March. Are you, are you able to uh, comment on your latest transfer edition? Oh, yeah. I can, yes, I just got the okay that yes, I am. Can you comment? And on Duke Wellington, he can bring a table, and I guess he'll be sitting one. Yeah, you know, um, uh, very dynamic slot. I mean, the receiver that uh, uh, I can watch his tape that he was electric in high school, and and uh, obviously um, contacted us. I think we finished on him whenever uh, uh, two years ago or whatever it was, and. Uh, but I like him. Uh, he's a great mama, and uh, he's got a lot of speed, and I think he's going to be a dynamic slot for us. I really do. We're really excited about getting him in here. Thanks, Coach. Tom? Hey there. Sam, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, just talking, I, I guess Arkansas's numbers have been going up, up a little bit. You need to stay positive in terms of wanting to play, but – are you having any uh, any concerns that the season might not go as scheduled and things might have to be adjusted? No, not really. I mean, we can only control what we can control in here. And uh, uh, in our SEC uh, head coaches meetings, it's uh, uh, everything's going planned on schedule for September 5 and and uh, that's what we're preparing for. Obviously, there's a lot of different scenarios and things of that nature. But as of uh, today and and I'm saying in the near future, uh, we're looking forward to uh, starting the season off uh, September 5th. Uh, Kyle did not want us to ask about numbers of, of positive uh, COVID um, testers on your team. Has it impacted you in terms of uh, guys to, to get out and run and do the things that y'all want to do? Has it been an impact? No, not not really. I mean, obviously, um, if you if you have, have a positive, then it it uh, going to take whoever's with them or, or around them for a ten to fourteen day period. So, um, you know, if you have a positive, then it certainly affects who's able to work out and who's not. Um, I can say it's we've been very good here. Uh, nice job with this COVID, and and uh, I'm very proud of the way our players have handled it. Okay, I got more, Kyle, but uh, I'll come back in at the yeah, end. I got you, uh, Nikki. Do you have questions? Sure. Yes, Coach. When you guys start start the walkthroughs and whatnot, how do you really determine? Um, you know, depth when you're starting those things? Like, how do you go through – do you just start with what they were working with last year? How do you go about that? Our depth chart, obviously we have one now, Nikki, and and, and um, it'll be a revolving depth chart, I'm sure. There'll be some guys that certainly are there for good, but um, you have to have a first way to line them up. So uh, we certainly have a depth chart now. A lot of it has to do with – uh, last season, maybe the season four, a lot of it have to do with uh, what we saw in the eight-week off-season program as well. So um, we're going to have a one, two, three, work with some things of two spotting, do some things where we can get everybody out there, reps. Uh, obviously, we need to look at the kids and of course, in a walkthrough, you're not going to be able to determine whether they can go hit and run and tackle and all those things, but you are going to be able to see who's uh, from these meetings. You saw the freshmen come in. Um, I know you haven't been able to see them work out, but was there anyone that surprised you with how ready they look, um, um, you know, the, the freshmen specifically? 
You know, they all looked really I, – I thought they all came in and looked like they was in pretty good shape. Uh, you know, Andy Boykins came in. He, he looks good. He's, he's a little bit over 300 pounds. And Malik came in, uh, looked good. You know, I think all of them – you know, we always take a picture of them when they come in as freshmen and then when they leave. And certainly what a huge transform, transformation in all of them. But um, I was pleased with the way they came in. I, I, I really like the group. Uh, they've got a great attitude. Um, you know, you, you, you have to find people that want to be at Arkansas and want to play the game. And, and I think we did in this group. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased at how they, they came, came back or came started. Nate, do you have questions? You're muted, Nate. Now, am, I, am I okay now? Can you hear me, yes, sir? Uh, Sam, just with the, the, the corona, kind of the not knowing the, the, whether the season will start or not, how hard is that to kind of keep the players motivated that the you know, season will be on schedule? Well, I think the media thinks we're not going to have a season more than we do. You know, and so um, there hadn't been one ounce of conversation between myself and our team about not having a season. So it's not hard to motivate them about not having a season because we all believe we're going to. If it changes, we'll adjust. But um, we're, we're September 5, and that's what we believe is going to happen. If it doesn't, we'll just have to figure out what our next step is. But But – it hadn't been hard because we, we don't talk about it. And as far as just when you put the ball down, just how much installation can you do in these, you know, the non-contact practice? I think quite a bit. You know, uh, we're going to use our special teams uh, in that in those practices as well. Uh, so they, they're going to give you an hour – well – six hours a week, however you're going to divide up the week. Uh, you have one day off, but you're going to get six hours a week uh, for walkthroughs. And uh, we're going to use some of that in special teams. So uh, I, I'm, I'm assuming we're going to get, you know, some somewhere around four and a half hours of walkthrough, uh, specifically offense and defense. And uh, we, we need it. And we'll get that times two. And hopefully that'll get us ready for uh, when uh, they start the 7th of August. And finally, are all your grad transfers may be on hand, at least by the time of practice to start in August? Yeah, all our – I believe all our grad transfers are here now. Well, I, they are. Every grad transfer we have is, has been with us for a little bit. Thanks. I'll let somebody else take a shot. Thanks, Nate. Uh, Tara slash Mike. Yeah, cool. Coach, you, you mentioned uh, some of the media don't think there's going to be one. There's a lot of fans out there that are saying this. And I'm wondering how, how you guys deal. It's all over message boards, uh, all this typical social media. Ah, there's not going to be a season. There's no way they can play. Fans who love college football just seem to somehow – some of these people have given up. And in the absence of real knowledge, there's a lot of crazy talk out there. I mean, we were dealing with a situation yesterday where a good source was telling us, you guys were sending everybody home today. And obviously that's nonsense. But how, how do you kind of deal with this whole backdrop with all that going on? Well, um, you know, I learned a long time ago um, – Media is very important, but it's also it can it can make your team and it can break your team if you pay a lot of attention to it. And um, so we're going off of facts of what we know. And I'm in a head coach's meeting every at seven thirty, and I'm going off of facts from the SEC commissioner. And so all speculation. I mean, we could speculate for the whole – for a month. And some of us be right, a lot of us be wrong. Uh, I'm just going off the facts of what the SEC commissioner is telling us, and we're going as planned to have a season September 5th. And I don't know – honestly, I don't know how you can possibly prepare a team if you look at it any other way than that. 
Uh, I don't know if you wanted to ask about the two-day thing. I thought that was a good question. We were talking about um, if there were possibility right now of you guys starting up two days at all. Tara, I'm so old that I just say two a days, and I mean, I mean fall camp, but every time it comes out of my mouth, it comes as two a days. I've not heard one thing about two a days or anything of that nature. When I say that, that's a mistake by me. Uh, I mean uh, just fall camp. That's my that's my fault. Good. Thank you, Bob. I think you're muted, Bob. Okay, how about there? There you go. Well, I'm, I'm a technical wizard. Um, hey, Sam, I know you haven't gotten to see Rakeem in practice yet, you know, running in like a real practice, but I'm sure you watched a lot of film on him. You've got to be around now for a while. Kind of what's your take on um, how he's getting ready for this year, how determined he is? Because he's had great individual stats, but the team hadn't won. I know that's a big thing, you know, for him. You'll have to ask him that same question because he'll know the answer better than I do. But I, I do know this, that we're really happy he came back. Uh, uh, he has great leadership skills. He's motivated. And uh, I love him. I'm, I'm very, very excited to see him perform this year. And I'm very, very happy he's a Razorback. And, I, you know, he's working extremely hard. And obviously, uh, he knows what this senior season holds for him and for the football team. And the better he is, the better our football team is going to be as well and the people around him. So I've been really, really excited about him. And uh, I think he's going to have a heck of a football season. He was very productive. But I know a while back you talked about talking to him about how he can get better, how he can raise his draft stock, obviously how he can help you guys win more games. Um, where do you think he can be better specifically? Well, what can you do better? What what can you guys help him do better? Well, I think I think we answered this before, but um, you know, he obviously is a dynamic runner, very powerful. Uh, understand? He can see the field out. You know, his outstanding vision. Um, in our report that we we uh, got back and we shared it with. Rakeem is, you know, we need to get him more pass protection reps. That'll help him in the league. Uh, we need to get him the ball out of the backfield uh, so he can catch out of the backfield. Those are things that uh, are in our offense, certainly. And uh, the better he is at those, uh, the higher his draft stock's going to become. Okay. Yeah, I got a few more if, if you have time. So I'll let that. How about that? Uh, Hutch? Yeah, Coach, I was just wondering, I know you can't be with the guys during their workouts and stuff, and last time we talked, you weren't sure how much interaction you'd have with them. Now that you've had a couple of weeks, I mean, have you been able to have any in-person interaction with the team, and, and what's that been like? Not much, to be honest with you. Um, you know, we have some kids in here from, from academics, and we need to get better, or we're doing great, and we're able to talk to them about that but a whole lot of conversation between us face to face with the football team besides our strength staff and then I'm not sure if you'll be able to answer this or not but with Crawford coming in from Oklahoma but you can maybe provide some insight on how y'all were able to make that work scholarship wise I think most of us thought you would hit your uh, limit for this year is there any insight you could give us on that yeah he just pushes forward to the next season so he'll count in the count for next year all right, thank yeah, you. We're, we're full, so mm -hmm. we, we'd have to push him forward. Thank you. Ty? Yeah, Coach, um, kind of just with the parents, I, I know as a freshman, that's it's kind of like one of the more difficult times transitioning, going from your parents' house and then going to college, being off on your own. What reassurances did you give the parents who moved in their freshmen this weekend? If you really look at this recruiting cycle and you look at it, uh, let's say that you came in January on your official visit and normally what happens now and then, well, uh, you probably get three or four times to see them in the spring because you're going to go by the school and see them. You probably, they're probably going to come to the spring game, which is number five. And so you're probably, or they may come down 
uh, in between those times, but you're probably missed out on four or five opportunities to see the young man and his family. So we were much more concerned this year than any year at all in getting our freshmen here because we, it's a, it's a relationship business and it was hard. It's hard to build relationships over the phone or over zoom. So we, we made a conscious effort of trying to make sure that we were talking to our kids as much as we possibly we felt like we lost at least four, maybe five face to face opportunities with our recruits. So Obviously, our entire staff Friday was uh, over to the uh, quads, and we were able to visit. And our whole our whole Friday was trying to make the parents feel extremely comfortable that they were leaving their their kids in the right hands. And so that's all you can do, really, and communicate. We know, like we know how much of an impact Dan. Yell has with the basketball program, um, just with your wife, Jamie. Coach, how much of an impact does she have on the Arkansas football program? I don't really know. You'd have to ask her. I mean, uh, she's a great supporter of, of myself and the, and the football team. Uh, I'm not for sure that she's uh, unbelievably active right now because, to be honest with you, really can't be. Um, socially, um, but she's my right hand man, woman, and uh, uh, I'm excited that she's uh, uh, willing to help me recruit because uh, it is a family, and and uh, she's a big part of of our football program. Thanks, Coach. Trey Shap, you got anything? Yeah, Coach, it's le leading up to September 5th, you've got a, a plan of attack. If all of a sudden you get word that, okay, we're not going to start September 5th, do you have multiple plans that you would work through, and how would that work? I think that's the, uh, the biggest concern is the what ifs. You know, what if this happens? What if you get, you know, um, uh, pushed back two weeks? What if you all those type things and and that's always a constant communication between my myself, Coach Walker, uh, and our three coordinators. You know, we're talking about that all the time. We just had a meeting yesterday about our plan, and then okay, let's say that they give us another week. Are we comfortable with exactly what we're doing now, or do we need to change it up for the kids? Uh, we're not in the time-consuming business; we're in the winning business, and. So we're not trying to have our kids here for, for because the NCAA says you can have them here. If we're going to have them here and have them in meetings, we need to be diversified enough in our meetings that we're keeping their attention that we can go win football games. That's it. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Uh, all right. Let's start working our way back around the room here. We've probably got uh, eight, ten minutes left with Coach here before we get to Rakeem and Monteric. Uh, Trey Biddy, you got anything? Yeah, Coach, I got a couple of questions. Uh, I was wondering about your offensive line last year. It was uh, pretty wide overall. And I know a lot of guys have made some gains. Has there been, like, what are we looking at right now for some of the key players in terms of um, – you know, getting up to that 300, 300 plus range. Well, we're big right now, Trey. You won't believe it, but we got a we got a pretty good size offensive line. I mean, they came back. Um, I can say this: their mamas must be really good at cooking because when they left and they came back, there's and it was quality weight. Um, but right now, you know, I, I I'm I'm very pleased with the size of our offensive line. Uh, you know, I like. Big, you know, and we're certainly going to continue to try to get bigger. But the kids that we have certainly have done that. And Jamil's uh, Coach Walker has put an emphasis on that. Uh, maybe not quite running as much as uh, the bigs, much as we normally would at this point. But we're, you know, uh, to me, bigger is better uh, as long as you can move. And that's what we're trying to get done right now. But I've been really pleased with the size. Uh, the way the guys came back. And I wanted to ask you maybe if you could give us an example, maybe 
maybe have one guy asked to add, add weight that, that added a lot or maybe a couple and, and maybe somebody that you asked to, to trim up or something? Well, well, Myron Cunningham was about 285, 287, and he's about 319 now. So he needed it. I mean, you know, it's hard to set the bowl have enough butt to set it with, you know, and um, – so he needed it, and I had a nice conversation with him, and and uh, I think he's going to have a nice season. But he he worked hard at, at gaining that weight and staying in shape. Thanks, Coach. You're welcome, Tom. Okay. Yes, um, we're going to start talk to Buster Brown here in a minute, and just any thoughts you have on what you've seen of him, what you've heard back from Jamil Walker and the strength coaches on what type of player he's developing into because he's he's gotten better each year he's been here well again I'm so happy he's on the football team I mean Buster Brown is a great kid and works his tail off you know he he had a little bit of an injury back in I don't know January and the next day he was ready to go you know he's uh he loves the game of football and and uh, I'm that you guys are going to be able to talk to him and Rakeem because those guys are 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 great ambassadors for our football team. He's a hard worker, a guy that you can count on. He's loyal. You can trust him, and uh, therefore that's why I ask you guys to talk to him today because I think it's he's a special person. Okay, and then just in reports you've gotten back, uh, everything kind of takes on its own identity. But guys who have maybe risen above the position they held before in terms of leadership, in terms of uh, being at the front of the line, you know, rallying in the guys, just what you've heard. You know, that's a, that's a great question. And I hate not to answer it because it's such a good question, but I, I don't know the answer. I mean, we, we truly are in our own little world over here. We're in a little bit different bubble over here than what they are in the strength program. And, it's voluntary, so you're supposed to voluntary not ask questions about it. So we've been trying to stay true to the rules. So I wish we could answer that question, but we can't. Thank you, Tom. Mike? You know, I think some of the fans were frustrated with that news that came out with LSU or supposedly like 18 or 20 players in and they traced back to some nightclubs out off the campus. And the latest CDC guidelines basically indicate that this thing is spreading among young people, largely indoors, close contact. That's one thing for the average, you know, college student, but you, actually your players need to avoid that. But how realistic is it for you to talk to your players and convince them not to do that, knowing that they're the age in which that's what guys do. How, how hard is that? And how realistic is it to expect them to, in the final analysis, when you're not around, listen to you? Well, if they want to have a football season, it's realistic to ask them to stay away from people. I mean, um, but, I mean, they're young. I mean, they, they, they like to, just like we do, we like, we like to be around people and things of that nature. It's not only going out. It's in your dormitory. I mean, when your uh, roommates, you know, it's all those things about wearing a mask. Tell you what's happened. We have gotten better and better at social distancing as we continue to go through these weeks. I mean, we've gotten a lot better. You can see it uh, outside the building. You can see it in the building. Um, we, the education has worked. Uh, but to sit here and say 4th of July, I mean, come on. You're either going to say we trust you to be as social distancing as you can, or you're going to say – uh, you can't go anywhere, including any place out of your apartment. I mean, you can't do that. And so we choose to believe that uh, 
you know, what's the difference in the fourth and last weekend? You know, I mean, the kids are off. And so um, we choose to trust and believe in our team and that they're grown men because otherwise it – well, A, I think that's the way you should do, and B, it it wear you out. It wear you totally out if you were worried whether they had their mask on at a restaurant or not. I mean, okay. it wear you out. One more. Uh, we have uh... – person here we, we're two television stations NBC and Fox and we've got somebody that deals with the networks on programming things like that and he told me last night that he, he had talked to someone at each of the networks that said in asking about college startup patient that the networks had was that the various athletic conferences were sort of waiting to see how things work with baseball major league baseball and the NBA to kind of get an idea of what going to happen with them you know come September I mean have you heard anything like that that that's going to help if it works well I say this you know any professional sport or even a college sport that would start up before us uh, whether obviously it's NBA and Major League Baseball uh, we're going to be able to get some information on what they did right and what they did wrong and the better obviously that it goes uh, certainly the better opportunity we'll have to get out there on time. Um, so there will be information uh, from Major League Baseball and NBA, how they're doing things and how we can do it if it's good, just like them, and better if, if, if they're having some problems. Thanks, Mike. All right, Bob, wrap us up with a couple here. Muted, How's that? Yeah. Okay. Hey, Sam, uh, something else I wanted to ask you. I know I'm about the surface. You know that. Uh, hey, with Rick, right. I guess between sitting out at A&M, the JUCO, and then you're the second staff he's had here, he, he's working on his fourth staff. Um, I would think that would have to mature a guy. I know you haven't, say, haven't been around those other staffs. So what do you think about Rakeem going through all that? How could that maybe help him going into this last season? I don't know if it has a lot to do with how, what his thinking is or not. I think you're going to be able to interview him here in a minute, and he'll be able to tell you. But I do know this. Since we've been here, he's been awesome, and he's been outstanding. He's worked his tail off. And and uh, so I don't know exactly everything that motivates him. He'll, he'll have to tell you, you that. But uh, he's done a heck of a job for us. And I know you talked about, you know, the, the plan is for fall football, but I've, I've read some stories. I've seen uh, Paul Feinbaum, some interviews on his show, and there's, I guess, some school of thought out there about flipping the football season to the spring because maybe there's going to be a uh, uh, anecdote or whatever you call it, a shot, you know, and then there'd be a better chance to have more fans in the stands, more revenue. Is that anything you've heard? And if so, what kind of credence do you give that? Well, sure. I've heard it. I mean, I've heard, I've heard a lot of stuff, you know, so what do, what do we say about me? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think before it gets to that point, they're going to cut the season down. You know, I think that starts the season later. Um, I don't know. There's so many scenarios right now, but so you'll know we're playing on September 5th. 